Hey, is that Timmy's? Yeah, because we're in Canada. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Tukes and Tires YouTube channel. Uh, as always, I'm Zach, if you're new here. Uh, we're doing some kind of different video today. So there's a top secret project that's coming up here. Obviously we haven't shown you what it is. The title's probably pretty mysterious, but you can see that we got, you can't really see anything. It's so dark out here. It's like 6.30 or something, but we got the truck and we got the trailer hooked up. I know this is kind of irrelevant. Okay, here we go. So you can see we got the truck and you can see there's a trailer there, but, uh, we're gonna, we have a three hour and 15 minute drive ahead of us. So uh, we're gonna get on the road and start heading that way, but we'll meet you guys there and uh, you might see what we're picking up. Okay guys, so we actually made it here. You can see dad's out here in the rain, uh, but we're actually gonna show it to you for the first time. It's pretty wicked. So this is what we're picking up right here. It's a 1968 Chevelle stock car circle track or oval track dirt car it's pretty wicked uh you know you can see it's got a three speed in it custom front suspension four nine inch it's pretty wicked looking it's got some damage here in the back that looks pretty sweet maybe me and dad will use the tractor pull it out but i mean i don't know i'm digging it it's got a good look to her dad's digging it <laughs> whole bunch of parts over there but we actually have the two owners of this car that bought this thing they're right here this is this is sam and this is Xander. nice to meet you guys yeah. so what you guys want to do with this thing why'd you uh, buy it we bought it to put an engine in it and go do donuts out in the trails in the back i mean that sounds so, i mean that, that sounds yeah. pretty wicked to me yeah. that sounds like a great time hopefully we can do something a little bit similar with it but i think we're going to try to get it loaded up right now and get it home and then uh, we'll look at this thing a little closer Maybe when it's not raining, so <laughs> here we go. So we actually made it back home. Uh, we got this thing loaded up and it was like a torrential downpour. Like as we were leaving there, uh, we just had to like run into the truck and get out of there. I had to put the truck into four wheel drive actually to make it out. It was a little mucky, but now we can go over the car a little bit better. So it came with a uh, supposedly 350 uh, small block. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be using this motor if you know me. Uh, obviously you can see that it came with these fenders, a um, whole bunch of other stuff that you know we might probably might not use but this thing is pretty wicked looking um i'm thinking that somebody just used the front half of the original suspension uh, i might have some kind of truck spindles on it or something because it's eight bolts so i'm not quite sure there um also if anybody has any history on this car please please get in contact with me hit me up on social media uh comment down below um or you know you can always uh try to get my email i'll send it to you uh but if you know anything about this car let me know i'm also going to put some stuff out on this thing on like local sites that people you know like kijiji and stuff like that maybe see if anybody has any information about it because uh, I'd love to know. I'd love to know the guy, if the guy's still alive that used to drive this car. Uh, we have a little bit of information that was started racing in the early 60s, 
Uh, it ran for about eight to 10 years. Uh, I got in an accident, but everything structurally back there is pretty sound. It's just the back supports where the back bumper got pushed down and the body is just a little tweaked, which uh, we might end up cutting some of that off and then just straightening that with the tractor. So that's, that's wicked. Um, but we'll bring you in, we'll look at a little bit. Uh, I'll probably end up making it so it fits two people because you know this one seater that's cool and all but you know it is what it is look it even came with a key <laughs> that's awesome i love this switch panel too i really hope these gauges work because i'm going to try to make as much as that stuff work as possible but you guys are probably wondering what we're doing with this thing why did i get this old uh circle track or oval track dirt car so the plan is, is, is I want to make it street legal. Uh, don't know how hard that's going to be. Obviously, we're going to go through everything on it, make all the lights work, uh, e-brake, all that stuff, but all in good time. Uh, we're just going to try to dig into this thing. Might try to throw a motor into it so that we can get it running. Um, you know, just do all the basics, and then we're actually going to take it in and get a safety done on it. Hopefully. I'm really hoping that we can make this thing legit enough that we could drive it because that's what it deserves. This thing's wicked. The patina on it is awesome. It sat for 40 years on a stock car trailer sitting just like this. So the thing underneath is like pretty well perfect. I want to get it in the shop on the hoist so that we can see it a little bit better. Like all this moss, we're not even going to clean that off. I love that. Like Gramps over there, the cap is full of moss and I just drive it like that. So that's how we're gonna leave this thing. Let me know in the comments down below what you would do with this stock car. Um, would you return it back to the track to its former glory? What would you do with it? Let me know, I wanna know. But uh, I'm super excited to dig into this thing. Uh, obviously, if you know me best, obviously we're probably gonna throw a, an LS into it because that's what I'm most familiar with. But who knows, we might go with something a little bit different, but I don't know. This thing is wicked. It's got a good luck to it. We're gonna get it probably off the trailer one of these days here, but uh, yeah, I don't know when we're gonna start working on it. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty wicked. It's a good way to start the year off because you guys are actually seeing this in the new year. So, <laughs> you know, holding out on you, but uh, yeah. Okay guys, so it's cold out here, but it's been about a week since we've bought the car. And uh, with me, I like to know as much information as possible about something. And I put a couple feelers out there on local Facebook pages where this car used to run and tracks it used to run on. And did we get quite the response back about it? Uh, so I really appreciate everybody that has reached out to me, telling me information about this car. And I was actually able to get in contact with Bob, the original driver and owner of this car. And I have his story right here. I talked to him on the phone. So I'm gonna try to tell it as best as he told me and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so they built this car in 1971 to 72. Uh, Delmer Bredman was the sponsor of the car. Don Little, Jim Davis also helped on the car and so did Bob Prudhomme. Uh, Delmer had this car on his used car lot and the guys were sitting in his office having a few drinks and they were bugging Delmer and they were like, you know, that would make a pretty beautiful stock car. And then next thing they know it, they were dragging this car down the road and they were building into a car. This wasn't Bob's first race car though. He had a Chevy two before this and a couple others, which I'll put on the screen. At the time when Bob was building the Chevelle, everybody else was using household threaded piping for their roll cages. And in Bob's words, he thought that that was shit. So he ran into the guy that owned Canadian stock car products and they were building proper roll cages that came in a kit. So Bob became a dealer for them. And that's the reason why this car has the cage in it that it does. And the cage that's in this car is pretty nice. For the suspension, they built a NASCAR style rear, tra rear trailing arm setup using 60s Chevy truck parts. It has adjustable coils on all four corners and Bobby Allison upper control arms. They used the four truck rear end so they could get the right gear ratio, which is a 433. And they used Chevy one ton front spindles so they had bigger bearings and bigger drum brakes for better stopping, but they didn't have drag like disc brakes did. The car had a 302 Z28 motor that they built. 
Uh, and the only reason it had that is because the rule stated that they could only run up to a 320 cubic inches and that back then the 302s were a quick revving engine and they could build a lot of horsepower out of them. Behind that had a manual three-speed Saginaw transmission. Bob raced this car for about three to four years and from my research and from what other people have told me, Bob is one hell of a driver and he could drive this car around the track like it was nothing, basically like he was on glass. Uh, he's definitely a local legend and so is this car. Uh, they sold the car, but Bob bought the car back with the intent of redoing it, but due to health issues was not able to do so. And he sold the car at the beginning of 2022, which basically brings us to the start of this video from the guy I bought it from, Sam, uh, which Sam bought it off of Bob. So let me know down in the comments what you would do with this car. Uh, Obviously, we're gonna try to make this thing street legal and actually drive it and show it off like it should be. I think it's perfect just the way it is. Uh, we're not gonna do anything with the way, you know, the body looks other than maybe straightening out a few panels and adding some glass and sealing the cockpit. But uh, hopefully the next video, we're gonna maybe try to either gather up some parts or it'll be actually putting the motor into this car. So make sure you guys follow along and stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm really excited to get onto this, you know, this project. Um, obviously, we have other stuff going on too, so it'll be within that and uh, that, uh, you know, probably mixed in there with everything else. But uh, this car is super cool. I'm so happy that I got my hands on it and that we can actually uh, try to bring it back to life. But uh, you guys will just have to wait till the next video to see what we do with it. So. Like, like always, guys, I really appreciate all you guys watching and subscribing. You guys are the best, but uh, that's it for now. So, as always, don't forget to salute the beaver.